How's it going guys? Welcome back to Johnny64 and the Nintendo Switch just turned five years old on March 3rd. So as a way to celebrate that and what I thought would be a good conversation piece would be if I made a video where I ranked, not necessarily ranked, but where I picked my favorite Nintendo Switch game or what I believe to be the best Nintendo Switch game from each year. So let's start with 2017 going all the way through 2021. So 2017, I believe, is objectively the best Nintendo Switch year to date. Partially because the console released that year, but also look at the lineup of games we got. We got Super Mario Odyssey, we got Breath of the Wild, we got Splatoon 2, and we got Mario 8 Deluxe. Now obviously Mario 8 Deluxe had been previously on other consoles, but they did upgrade it for the Nintendo Switch. I think the brace is mainly between Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, but I'm actually going with Super Mario Odyssey. And my reasoning for this is basically the fact that I believe Super Mario Odyssey is a better Mario game than Breath of the Wild is as a Zelda game. Super Mario Odyssey did everything that I asked it to do. Uh, it was just beautiful aesthetically, the graphics are great, the, the score is one of the greatest scores in video game history. It is magnificent. It has the perfect balance between modernizing Mario and giving it that nice bit of nostalgia that most of us Nintendo fans just love. Breath of the Wild, on the other hand, was a little bit more controversial, and although I absolutely love that game and have put so much time into it, there are more things that it's lacking than Super Mario Odyssey, like the dungeons, for example. I don't believe that you can have a perfect Zelda game if there isn't dungeons present partially because the tone just isn't balanced as well. I believe that you need that gloomier dungeon aspect to balance out the light and hope of the land of Hyrule. And so other previous Zelda games had executed that perfectly. I did like the Divine Beasts, but they began to start looking a little bit samey. They're a little bit too similar in atmosphere. And the same goes for the shrines. I did enjoy the shrines, but at a certain point, I started to get tired of them. So I think Breath of the Wild 2 will do a better job on capitalizing upon everything that it takes to make a perfect Zelda game. So I think that one's going to be much better. Super Mario Odyssey 2, uh, sorry, Super Mario Odyssey, when I finished that game, there really wasn't much I felt like it was lacking. It was pretty much everything I wanted in a Mario game. So I do believe it's a little bit controversial, but I'm going with Super Mario Odyssey in 2017. Now, 2018 is a little bit of a down year for the Nintendo Switch. They released most of their incredible games in 2017. Uh, but with that being said, we did get one incredible game, at least one incredible game in 2018 that I believe runs away with it. And that is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, which is arguably the greatest Super Smash Brothers game of all time. I know some Melee fans won't like me saying that, but I really think Ultimate with the amount of characters it has, with how technically sound it is, it really rivals Melee as one of the best. It honestly doesn't have to be seen as better than Melee to easily take the best game of 2018. There is nothing that I, well, there are a couple things. There's certain characters I obviously wish were in Ultimate, but I think that's true of just about everyone. That game still hasn't grown old to me. I still enjoy playing it. And with the level of detail that it has, with all the different maps, with all the different characters, with all the different soundtracks, it is an absolute masterpiece of a game. So that one easily takes 2018 for me. Now, 2019 is a very, very competitive year as well. You have Super Mario Maker 2, Luigi's Mansion 3, Fire Emblem Three Houses, and Link's Awakening. And I think any one of these games would be a solid choice to take 2019. But for me, the slight edge has to go to Link's Awakening. This game was absolutely incredible. It was such a joy to play. As someone who absolutely loves A Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo, going through this game felt like I was going through A Link to the Past again for the first time. The art style, the, um, the dungeons, and the way it's laid out. The way this game is actually very complex and difficult to figure out. There are legitimate times in this game where I was stuck. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know how to figure out, like, what I should do next. It does give you some subtle hints, but even when you get the hints from the telephone, sometimes you're still confused as to what to do. And I like the fact that this game respects its players enough to give you that challenge and expects you to figure it out. 
This is an absolute masterpiece of a game, and the fact that it's a remaster of a Game Boy game, like just look at the Game Boy game, and then look at what they made it into with Link's Awakening, and it is absolutely incredible. I would have never guessed in my wildest dreams that they could have made a simple Game Boy game look this amazing on the Nintendo Switch. What an amazing game this is. I love Super Mario Maker 2, Luigi's Mansion 3, and Fire Emblem Three Houses, but because of everything I just said, I think Link's Awakening has got to take it for me as the best game of 2019. 2020 is another easy choice for me. Now, because of the pandemic, I really think Nintendo was held back this year. Uh, so I don't know if I would pick this game compared to the other games on this list, but as far as how it compares to the other games in 2020, I think it's an easy decision. Animal Crossing New Horizons is the best game of this year. As far as Animal Crossing games go, I think this one is just about as good as you could get with an Animal Crossing game. It is so relaxing, it is so calming, it is so beautiful. I think one of my main criticisms of this game is the fact that once you pretty much exhaust it and build the island of your dreams, you get it up to being a five-star island, you kind of start running out of things to do, and at that point, the only way to keep things interesting is to basically start from scratch all over again and to completely redesign your island, because at this point, I've basically made my island to what I think is perfection. I've got all the villagers I want. Uh, but with that being said, it doesn't have to be the greatest game of all time to win 2020. It just has to be a very, very good game, and that's what it was. So for me, this is an easy decision. Animal Crossing New Horizons takes 2020. 2021, also an easy decision for me. Metroid Dread takes it. This game was so long in the making. It was even teased in the mid 2000s from Metroid Prime 3. And man, did they deliver on this game. The art style is gorgeous. The frame rate is so impressive for the Nintendo Switch. Samus looks gorgeous. And although I don't think it is the best soundtrack of a Metroid game. It still has grown on me. I still believe it's pretty good. Ravenbeak is an incredible villain. What a villain Ravenbeak was, and I am a little bit sad that it looks like we probably won't be getting Ravenbeak in future Metroid games, although I have a theory of how we could. That is also on this channel if you want to check that out. But this game didn't really disappoint. I got through it fairly quickly, but I've kept playing it afterwards. I've beaten this game probably five or six times now, and it is an enjoyable experience every time. It's so smooth. Controlling Samus has never felt better. This is a masterpiece of a game. If you're ever gonna pick it up and you haven't picked it up yet, just be ready for a challenge because it is definitely tough to go through your first time playing it. But once you start to figure out the patterns and how all the enemies work, uh, it becomes a lot simpler. So it just takes trial and error, but you'll get the hang of it eventually. Uh, it's not my favorite Metroid game of all time. I still prefer the Metroid Prime series over Metroid Dread, but it's definitely up there for the best Metroid games of all time. This is my list. Uh, some controversial choices, mostly in 2017 and 2019, but I think most people are going to agree on the other three years. So let me know in the comment section what your five-year list looks like. I look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Nintendo content, and I will see you guys in the next video.